Hello and welcome to part two of this Tableau Made Easy series. Last time we got everything downloaded and installed for Tableau Public and we had a super quick look at the first screen that we see when we open the Tableau application. And that is exactly what I have on my screen right now and exactly where we will pick up from here. In this tutorial, we are going to import our data and we're gonna take a bit of a look around the different parts of Tableau to get familiar with our data and to see how Tableau deals with it when we bring it in. Now, if you do want to build up our amazing Tableau dashboard alongside me, then you'll need to have the earthquake data CSV file downloaded. So please do pause the video here and you'll find the download link in the notes below this video. Cool, so before we do bring that data file into Tableau here, I'm keen to take a quick look at it in Excel just so we can understand it a bit better. And then when we do see it in Tableau, everything that we see for the very first time will hopefully make a bit more sense to us. So don't worry about doing this yourself. You can just watch this part for now. But if I open up that earthquake data CSV file in Excel, we can see our data. And we have, if I head down to the bottom, around 2,200 rows of data in our data set. And each of those rows represents one earthquake that took place within a 30 day period. So again, each row in this data set is an independent earthquake that was recorded. So now we know that, let's take a look at what columns we have in the data. So we have an ID column, which is unique per earthquake. We have the date and time of the earthquake in a column aptly named date time. We have the latitude and longitude, so the precise location of the earthquake. We then have this column called magnitude, so essentially a measure of how powerful the earthquake was with a higher number being more powerful. We then have this column called location, which is a more categorized view of the earthquake's location. And this is essentially at country level, although for the United States, it is categorized at state level instead. Finally, over on the right, we have the column called location broad, which is just a higher level location split into global regions such as North America, Oceania, Asia, the Middle East, and so on. So that is our data around 2,200 unique earthquake events recorded over a 30 day period. And within that data, we've got a mixture of categorical variables, numeric variables, and even date and time variables. So that will all be interesting to keep an eye on once we move into Tableau. So let's do exactly that now. Let's head back over to Tableau and import our data there. Awesome, so here in Tableau, over on the left, you can see that we have our import or connection options. And while we were just taking a look at our data file in Excel, since our data is in CSV format, we are actually going to be using the text file option. So let's click on that. Now I am already pointing to the required folder. If you are not, you'll just need to navigate to where your earthquake data CSV file is located. Once you've done that, let's select the earthquake data file and then open. Cool, so that is now imported into Tableau and we can see that it is represented up the top of screen here. And what you might also notice is this in the middle where it says need more data, drag tables here to relate them. And this is a super powerful part of Tableau. You can actually bring in and use multiple tables of data and then either join them together or filter one table based on the records of another table and so on and so on, just like you might in SQL, for example. We're not gonna worry too much about that right now. We've got the data that we need all in one file. So the next place I want you to look is down the bottom of the screen. And on the left, we have a list of the columns in our data set. We've got the physical table column in the middle here, and this is referring to the source of the data. Not that exciting in our case here, but it is useful when you've got multiple data sources. We've then got field name, which is the name that Tableau is calling each column. And we can actually rename these. So very quickly, if you ever need or want to do this, you can just right click on a variable. So let's take ID, for example, and then we can just head up to rename and we could put in whatever name we wanted there. Next in the section to the bottom left, if I just expand the width of this a little bit here, we've got the remote field name, and this is the name of each of our columns in our source data, in other words, our raw CSV file. So Tableau essentially has both bits of information, the raw source column name, and then the name that we want for our visualization. So essentially an alias if we want to use one. 
Now lastly in this section, and I think the most interesting column of them all, is this first column here called type. And this is actually super cool. You can see that Tableau has been really, really clever. It has recognized which fields are of what data type. And we can see the symbols down that type column. Now I'm gonna talk about these data types a little bit more, but I first wanna draw your attention to the fact that we can also see these symbols over in this right hand section along the top here. And this is another really useful area when we bring in new data as it gives us a sample of rows to look over to help us understand what everything is and what format it's in. So like I say, really, really useful. Now we've already taken a bit of a look at our data in Excel, so we're pretty comfortable with everything that we have. What I'd like to do now is discuss these data types that Tableau has assigned, these symbols along the top of this section that we spoke about a moment ago. So we have ID here as an integer, or in other words, a whole number. And if we click on the little hash symbol there, we can see that it has indeed been categorized as that. Moving on to the next column, date time has been categorized as a date time variable, and you can see that as a calendar and a clock. Next, latitude and longitude. These are interesting. You'd think that they would have just been categorized as floats or decimal numbers, but Tableau is clever enough to see the names latitude and longitude and make the presumption that we might want these to be something to do with geographic location. So it's gone ahead and categorized those as such. Now, if we actually click on the little globe icon of latitude here, we can see that at the highest of levels, it is actually recognized as a decimal number number. But if we head down to the last one here, geographic role, we can see it has been tagged as latitude. And this will come in really helpful when we get to actually creating our first visualization very soon. Keeping on moving, next we have magnitude, which has been categorized as an integer or in Tableau terminology, a whole number. Then finally, to the right of our table, we have location and location broad, and these have been categorized as strings. And we can see those represented with the little ABC icons at the top there. So Tableau has been really clever here and it's actually got them all correct. If it hadn't, and perhaps we wanted to change the data type for a variable, we can do that easily by just clicking on the icon. So let me just click on the integer icon. So if I click on the hash symbol here, I could just change that to a string, for example. Now we actually want ID to be an integer, so I'll just change that back by doing the same thing again. So clicking on the icon, and I'm gonna change that back to number whole. So there we go, that is how the imported data that we're using for a project will be represented in this first window of Tableau. It gives us a really nice chance to look over exactly what we're dealing with and it also allows us to make any amendments or refinements to how that data exists. So quite an important thing to know about. So let's stop here for now and then in part three we are going to go straight to creating our very first visualization and you are going to see just how quick and easy Tableau makes this. Everything is going to get very real, very fast, so I'm extremely excited about this one. I will see you there.